I'm going to show you a lady on Instagram. If you don't already follow her work, you probably should because her name is Pamela Pauline. She comes from Mona Vale in Sydney and she does very beautiful montage work. Um, and um, I've taken great inspiration from um, knowing her and from looking at her work in detail. So she, she makes creations like these pictures that take her weeks and weeks and weeks to put together. Um, tonight we're going to put one together in an hour. <laughs> so it won't look exactly like that, but I'm going to show you the basics of um, how you can run with it. And, um, and I'm sorry to all the boys in the room, it's going to be about flowers and birds again, but, you know, I can't really bring myself to put in trains and planes and automobiles into a montage. It just isn't doing it for me. So um, back away, put the back away. Okay, I'm going to open up Photoshop. And um, I am going to, where am I going to start? I'm going to start with making a, just a new file and I'm just going to make it a 1080 by 1080 square there as well. And I'm going to, and that will, that's a web size one. Yeah. So this is what we're going to make tonight. Um, and I'm just going to show you the principles of it. Um, all those layers, it looks quite complicated, um, but it's not. Um, this one probably put me took me two hours to put together the, um, this afternoon. If I was to want to refine it and make it perfect and make every detail about it perfect, then it would take me a couple of days to finalise. So it's not hard in principle, but getting it done correctly and properly is. Um, so what I'm going to start with, I'll start back here and I'm going to um, go into the shapes folder up on the window. And down here is shapes. And when you open this folder here, it'll give you all sorts of templates for anything that you might want to use. Um, you know, if I wanted to make a shape with animals and things, I could just pick some animals. Um, it, the legacy shapes, and I'm going to use a just a wreath shape, and I'm just going to pick the one that was already, if I put that in, what if I put circle in? into the search box and it's going to pull up all the circles for me. You'll see that it says legacy shapes here. Legacy means that was in the past, um, the past versions of Photoshop and it's not in this current version of Photoshop. So you can, if you, you can go into the, this little three little bars and it often says import shapes or legacy shapes and more. So you can actually bring back the stuff that was in previous Photoshop versions. So I've already done that, as you can see, and I'm going to bring in this circle here. I'm simply going to drag and drop it, and I'm going to stretch it out. Now, because I made a square, I can, if I just hover it, you can see that that's on the horizontal, and soon enough, it's going to be, yep, that just go off there. So it's smack in the middle there already. Click to save that. And this is... This is the framework for the picture so that you, if you're trying to make something into a circle, you don't have to worry about how wonky you're going. This is your guideline before. This is going to stay in the picture right from the, um, right from the beginning and at the end we're going to get rid of it. The other thing I'm going to show you is libraries as well. So I'm pretty excited about libraries because I've only really just started using them and all of a sudden I've realised that they're... Uh, very useful, really. So I've made some folders here in my libraries here on the right of my favourite things. Um, I've put a whole lot of animals in there. I've put backgrounds in there, things that I might just want to pull out and use. There's the little purple flower from last week. Uh, birds, of course, there's lots of birds in there. Now, I've got either birds that aren't cut out or birds that are cut out ready to go. Um, so you can use that. And foliage, silhouettes, skies and some textures as well. So it's saving me a whole lot of time when I just want to plug and play instead of reaching into my hard drives or reaching or um, you know, some other folder somewhere, which I've got millions of on, you know, two large hard drives and the computer and the works. My favorite stuff is right there. So I can just plug and play. Uh, so I'm gonna reach into the foliage and I'm gonna pull out this little fellow, this little pink native. Now, I don't know what this pink native is. I'm going to just drag him out of my file. I believe he's being stored on the cloud as well. I don't know if someone can enlighten me where they are actually stored. I'm not sure. Um, 
and where Photoshop is reading them from because I'm not that evolved enough to know where they are. I just know that they are there. On the Adobe server. On the Adobe server. Okay, thank you. Um, so I, I'm just dragging him across and I'm going to settle him down there. Okay, so he's going to make the base of the reef. Now, I want lots of him, so I'm just going to go Control-J. I still want a Windows keyboard too. It's driving me nuts. Um, Control-J. And if someone knows the name of this flower, can you please write it in the chat? Um, Control-J, Control-J. So I've got a whole lot of copies of him. So there's my one pink native. I'm going to Command-T. And I'm going to use the warp tool. If I go up to edit, transform, down to warp, okay? And I'm just going to push him around a little bit, okay? Not too much out of whack, just push him around and that's just going to help him stay in the circle. All right, there we go. Okay, and select that, okay. So he's there. And I'm going to turn the next one on, the one on top. Control J, gonna move him away. I'll probably move him, let's just turn him with the handles or turn him around to the right. Bring him down there a little bit. Yep. And I'm going to, to um, accept that. Command T to select him again, up to edit, transform and warp. So it doesn't stay warped when you, um, Oh, do that. Do I want to bring that in? I might move him. Yeah. That up. Okay. Pop him in. I'm just going to select him again and I'm just going to move him up a little bit so he overlaps a little bit with these flowers there. Okay. I'm not going to make this an exact science tonight. Otherwise, we'll be here all night. Command T. Let's get the other one on. I'm going to press the shift button and I'm going to roll him over. And then with a little handle, turn him around a little bit and bring him across to the other side. Yeah. Pop him in there. And with the other one, turn that last one on. Command T, bring him over, press hold shift, turn him around so he's facing the opposite direction. Pop him in the top there. There, so you can see I'm just using the guy guidelines of the outside part of the circle really to um to make the base of that do i want to i'm just gonna yeah i'm not gonna warp that one uh, i think i might periosteum. hey periosteum. periosteum oh okay right. thank you okay command j i'm gonna make another two copies of that and you can see where i'm going to put them stick him down the bottom him down the bottom there, feel it, and I'll just squash him up a bit there. Yeah. Squash him up. Now I've got to put a mask on him. That one. What have I done there? Okay, there. Pop a mask on. Put a black brush on X to turn the B for brush, X to turn the brush back. And I just want to take out that bit there. And I want to take out that little bit in there as well. Um, because they're a hard, this is a hard edge plant, I'm going to use a hard edge brush on that. Okay. And did I have one more left? Where was my last one? Yeah, there is. Okay, it's hiding. Okay. Pop him up the top there. Okay. A little bit unbalanced already. Um, if I was going slowly and carefully, then I might be more careful about balancing the flowers out as well. Drop him back in there. And I want to put a mask on him. Click on the mask, make sure the black's on, B for brush. And yep. That's the mask. Nope. Oh, it's too much on there, okay. No, I want him back, I want him back. Down here. Okay, yeah, I'll just clear that out a little bit down there. Okay, so there's the basis of the ring there. Okay, um, so you can see that very quickly I'm going to gather lots of layers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the bottom pink native and the, hold the shift key down to the top pink native, and then I'm going to press Command G 
on a Mac, no idea about a Windows, and it turns all, all those flowers into a group. So periosteum, was it? Yeah, periosteum. Oh, areos. I can't spell it. It's still going to say P. -R -I -O. P. Oh, here we go. P. 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 E. No, E. E for Edward. E R I O S T E N O N. E M O N. M O N. Okay. Okay. Oh, now look there. Um. Also, let's right click on circle. And no, nope, let's right click on here. No, I'm trying to change those layers to something larger as well, so that you can see them somewhere. I learned a trick. Yeah, to increase the the uh, size, it's not going to do it for me. Of course, it's right there this afternoon. It's gone today. Anyway, I'm not going to bother with that. Okay, so that has put those layers together there, and then I'm going to go up and find my next little item to put in. Let's put this little yellow bud in too, which is the, that's the botanical name, yellow bud. <laughs> um, and I'll drop him in as well. So let's pop. Him into there. Okay, let's pop him into there. Now, oh, also, I'm going to open up that group again of very Ostermans. And if I wanted the little um, yellow bud to nestle under the plant, then I'm going to have to drag him down. I think he's right down the bottom, isn't he? Yeah, there we go. So it sits in there. So see, it depends on where you put your layer as to whether they nestle into each other or whether you need to put a mask on there and mask out other bits. So um, I'm going to control J for him because I want a couple more of him. And generally, I just try to keep it to um, uneven numbers as well. I'll pop him up the top and go up the top. He can go up the top as well. I'll take him off. Him, control J to highlight him and I move him somewhere else. Let's not press the shift button, turn it around, use the handle to slide him into a spot and pop him down there. I don't know, it doesn't really work for me actually. Let's pop him. I want to say that space for a bird that you so know is coming, don't you? Um, okay, he can go up there. I'll pop him up there and I'll accept that and I'll put a layer on him and just a black brush and just brush out his little um, stem. That's it. There we go. You can sit there. Okay. Um, and a yellow, last yellow bud, control J, uh, no, command T, pull him away. Let's find a space for him somewhere. Pop him over here. Try not to, you need to shuffle them around a little bit so they don't look mirror imaged as well. That's the other thing. Um, so I probably need to hold the shift button down and turn him around so that he does face inwards as well. Remembering with the composition, when you want to set a composition, face face your key elements in into the centre of the photo because you want your viewer to stay there. Um, the same with the flowers. Okay, and accept that. So that'll do for those. Uh, what am I going to put in? So much to choose. Oh, I'll put a little bit of lambs in. Let's put a bit of lambs here. This is lambs here, isn't it? My, I'm remembering something from my deep dark past, but I'm pretty sure it's lambs here. Now pop him in just with a little bit of foliage. Pop him down the bottom, I think. Yeah, click on him, command J, make a couple more of him and that other one, I think I'll move him down. Nope, nope, and right down. You can see how these layers, layers build up quickly. Oh, where is he? Is he even there? Is that even the right one? <laughs> it's not even the right one. Taking your time, you'd name them all. Um, oh, that's a new one. Okay. No, this is him. No, it's not him. Turn him off. That one. Let's do that one. Command T. 
leave him there and bring him bring him down there he goes so he just nestles in a little bit just make him a little bit bigger okay so when you when i'm going slowly at this process usually um you do need to because you can see how quickly the whole thing builds up and it builds up into quite a large file as well which is why i've started in a in a smaller um web size file but you very quickly find yourself switching buttons on and off to find where the heck your missing item is. So um, what I usually do is I usually label them. So this little lamb's ear here, lamb's ear, lamb's ear bottom, okay? So that I know that he's on the bottom of the circle. And to do that, all you need to do that is to um, double click. So let's turn that one on. Let's find a new home for him. Gonna go somewhere. Pop him up the top here. It's not great resolution, this little lambs here, but I'm not going to worry too much about that for the moment. Okay. Pop up there. Yeah. And maybe do I need to drop him down a bit? Yeah, there go nestle him in and it saves me masking him out. Okay. So he's lambs ear. Lambs ear. Um Two o'clock or top right, whichever one you want. Okay. I sometimes I use it at 24, the 24 hour clock because it's no, I use 12 hour clock because that's the easiest way to do it. Um that one's that's the bottom one. And then that then I know that that's the last one and he hasn't got a home yet. He is going to be somewhere around, I think. Let's pop him up here, I think. Okay. It's not very snoring in the background. <laughs> it's the 16-year-old Staffy, if you can hear her in the background. She's had a dinner, she's had a wind, she's had a cuddle, and now she's snoring. <laughs> um, she's settling in. Okay, so I'm going to leave that one there. So um, although I talked about grouping before, grouping is good for when it comes to making adjustments as well, because when you put something into a group, you can make um you can adjust everything in that group at the same time by clipping your adjustment layers to that, that group as well. So that's useful. Um, so that's why sometimes I might, instead of pulling the layers up and down to place them behind the flowers, um, masking them in and out is more appropriate. But I might have a mask. Oh, he's sort of all right for the moment. I'll leave him with his little stalk there. Okay, I'll leave him now. I won't fuss about him too much. Um, but, so, yeah, so it saves you masking, masking in and out if you've got them in a group. So you can go either direction with that. Now, he's a, it's a little bit too strong for me there, so I think I'm just going to – actually, no, I'm going to go find a bird to put in there. So I'll go back up to my library, click on the, the library there for the birds, and I'll find try and find a bird – of the same sort of colouring as well, because I don't want to make the palette too um, too varied. So this little cocky with his head down, can I get the nod? I'll bring him in. The cockies gave me a great performance one morning down at Balmoral Beach at Mossman. Uh, I don't know what they were carrying on. There was a whole lot of seeds on the ground. And at about half past seven in the morning when the light was all soft and glowy, they just came and flew all over me on the ground, making absolute racket. So I was able to just, I lay down on the ground with my camera with a 24 to 70 lens and just shot them with the sunlight coming through their wings and through the back of them for about half an hour. And they, they, were, they, they were walking towards me and they were flying around me and I don't know what the heck was going on, but it was a silly morning. So let's put this little cocky. Now he's he's clearly he's bigger than the reef. Um, don't really care too much at this stage for these purposes today. Um, is he going to go up there? Let's pop him in up there. Okay, pop him in up there. Now I can either mask him. I'll just let his little comb. No, he'll stand his little comb up. Okay. Oh, there you go, some grid lines. That's too much information for me. Um, there. So I will, what I'll do is, where's the yellow? Oh, there we go. Okay. 
if you, if you can just take it slow and show them how to flip one of the images. Is that a question? Yep. You show okay. How to, how to flip the photo. Okay. Um, right. So I blacked out the bud and I'm going to brush it back in with the X button. Nope. It's going to be on the top. Wait a minute. Yep. I'm going backwards. I'm still on this stupid PC keyboard. Okay. Here we go. Uh, cocky head down. Okay. I'm going to drop him below. How about I drop him below that yellow bud? And there we go. And he slots into there. All right. Um, okay, so you want to flip something. Okay, so let's put, put another bird in there. What am I going to put in there? I had another bird this afternoon. I'm just going to use, I'm just going to use another copy. What did I put in there? You're a little lorikeet at the Oh, that's it. There, Khaleesi. Okay. Khaleesi's the family lorikeet. Okay. So she was going to go in there. Okay. So she's probably going to come across in the right direction. Okay. Um, so here she is large. And if you want to flip something just on the side, so you can see a bit here. So take the side handle. And I don't know what Photoshop has done now, but it's done this i don't know why it did this in the last couple of big updates but you used to be you used to be able to hang on a second <laughs> i just <laughs> tim's being so good he's been so good for so long and now he's slipping <laughs> he's had a stern talking to after last week and he's 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 been as good for what about half an hour and he's just reached his max i think so previously, on the previous versions of Photoshop, you used to be able to just take this right-hand slider and you could just turn the bird around. But why Photoshop wants to put it upside down, I don't know now. So you can't do that anymore. So when you take that side slider, you have to hold the shift button down and then it comes across for you like that, okay? Same as if you wanted to turn him upside down as well. But if you don't use that, you know, I, it just gets all a bit weird for me, so... Um, it's holding the shift key down is the key to, you know, intuitive um, movement of your birds, of, of your shapes as well. So I'm going to pop Khaleesi in there somewhere. Yeah. I'll pop Khaleesi in there. You can check over. Khaleesi is our daughter's lorikeet. She's about nine years old now and she can, if anyone owns a lorikeet, she can go from a really loving, fun, inquisitive bird to a complete demon in the blink of an eyelid and by one minute be giving you kisses and the next minute biting your hand off. Um, very unpredictable little bird, but always useful because she's allowed out of her cage. And so I had lots of um, sessions with her, like in early morning sunlight flying around inside the house, trying to capture her in flight before she eats my camera, which she's rather amused by. Okay. So that's about that oh, I'm gonna don't worry about the smart object. Uh, I'm gonna add a little bit of fluff to that, and I thought I might put a little bit of wattle in. Now Elaine wants to know if she can rent Khaleesi for model shoots. <laughs> She'll eat your camera. She's obsessed with the viewfinder on my camera, and I've got to I've got to shoot really fast before she jumps on top of the camera and starts chewing the rubber. <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to put a little bit of wattle in just for a little bit of fluff. So let's pop, I'll just pop him on there and I'm going to command J, command J. So I've got a couple of copies there, turn them off, go down to that bottom one, command T and put him in somewhere. Now with this wattle, if you look very carefully, it, I shot it in sunlight. You can see with the other items, all the other um, objects that I've put in, that I've shot them in an the overhead cloud day because that means you don't get any shadows or, sh um, or you know, highlights or anything on them and then you can add your own lighting on it. This wattle I haven't. So I'm just going to have to make sure that when I put them into whichever spots I put it, I'm going to have to have the light the right direction. I don't actually know where I want to put it. Let's put a bit down here. It's a blank space down here. Make him bigger. Yeah, yeah, give him make, make a bit furry down the bottom there. 
don't for this exercise also try not to make things symmetrical as well because it I mean, you can if you want to, but I feel like it's a bit contrived when it becomes overtly symmetrical. And my dear husband would tell me that there are never um, even numbers in nature either. So that's why I never use even numbers. Um, go back up here. So Colleen is saying if you click in the middle of your image, it asks you whether you want to flip it horizontal or vertical. Ah, there you go. Okay. I'm going to drop that wattle down. Oh, there we go. Down there already. Okay. Where's my other wattle here? Turn on the other wattle. Command T to select him and. Yeah, I might keep that down the bottom. Yep. Keep down the bottom now. Pop him in there. Let's pop him in there, accept it, then Command T again, go up to Edit, Transform, Warp. I'm just going to pull him in. Oh, I've still got my fingers in the bottom of that wattle, <laughs> holding it there. I was holding it while I was shooting it. Just pop that, there you go. And, and I'm just aligning it to the edge of the wreath so that it helps to keep that little shape. I'll bring him out a little bit more. Sarah wants to know because of the file size, it would be better to save everything as JPEGs. Yes, absolutely. Or a PNG as well. If you cut them out and put them in the library, save them as PNG. A lot of mine are PSDs because I've been a lazy girl for so long and I've just saved them as PSDs. And it really, I'm not a mathematics whiz. It took me a long, long time to grasp the details about file sizes and resolutions and things. Um, I grasped the idea of shooting and how to use my camera and seeing a good shot in nature a thousand times quicker than I did trying to create, you know, a photo for web or a photo for printing. So that's been probably the one of my hardest um, issues to, to, to get with. Um, so, um, yeah, so now I save them. I've learned to save them. A JPEG will do for this size project. It will be absolutely fine. Um, and a PNG file means you can save your cutouts on a clear background as well, and they're slightly smaller than a huge PSD file. Uh, Command T, I'll put him at the back. Yeah. Oh, does he need, he probably needs some across the other side, doesn't he? Now, I'm going to keep, I'm not going to flip him because he's got, he's got light on the right hand side there. Pop it there. Yeah, pop him in there. Okay. Okay. Um, I'll put a mask on that because I'll get rid of my fingers. Click on the mask. X flips the mask to black. I don't know what that is on the Mac. Can't something. I've got to get rid of my fingers there. I don't want him competing with the other one too much. First, okay. And then Command minus to turn the picture back out. Okay. Compositionally wise, it's a little bit skew with, but you know, I'm not worrying tonight. I'm just having a little bit of fun here. Okay. So I think that's probably going to do it for me. So pretty happy with that. Um, if I turn on the rulers, if I turn on the rulers, ah, which move, why did Photoshop move them? It used to have it in this little window library, and now it's moved it to view. So I don't know why he wanted to do that anyway. So that I know it's a 1080 by 1080 picture. So five, what, 540 will get me to the middle. This the middle there. If I pull that ruler down there, 540, that will get me to the center there. Um, the, I've, the reason I want to use rulers was because, um, it, you know, that with, with it being a symmetrical object, if it's slightly out of whack, it'll pull your eye out of whack as well. The other thing I like to do is just make sure that that um, I've not got too much. They're sort of evenly matching on either side. I, you think the right hand side's a little lacking a little bit of fluff, nine sixty nine to ten eighty. So whatever that that's what is that Tim seventy to eighty is eighty one ten, and that one is whatever that one was. 100 so that's about 100 and the other one's 110 so it's not too bad 
So that'll do for the moment. I'm going to clear view, clear the guides. I love using rulers. They're great. They're great for checking. I don't think I want to add anything else in. I'm not going to add any too much else fluff in. Um, and I'll put this, put that away, bring that back up so we can see the shapes. Okay, shapes is under window. So under the window file here in your Photoshop file, anything that you've got clicked on, okay, will come up on the up on the right hand side there. Okay, so I haven't got shapes clicked on. <laughs> <laughs> not there anyway and now it's highlighted now now ones that i don't like so if windows oh it wants to put gradients up there okay so it'll put gradients some of them it puts in here and then some of the there's a it's a click out box there so it's put gradients in there uh i don't like i like to go and get the gradients rather than having them on tap so if i don't want those gradients there i can come here to the three little bars if I roll down, I just go close and it will close gradients. If I went to this bar up the top and close tab group, it would take all of them out as once, okay? So close just closes one, close tab group closes all of them. So, um, you know, it puts things in like histogram. You use the histogram if I'm using levels. Um, not a lot. I tend to use the histogram perhaps more when I'm shooting or perhaps in Lightroom. Uh, Anyway, so all of those brushes you can put in there, channels. Tim loves channels. I'm not a channel girl. I probably should be, but I'm not. I'm not that highly evolved. Swatches, I don't use swatches. It, it likes to put swatches in there, but I don't put in there. So all of those actions, actions should be there. Actions is there. It's interesting. Okay, so it brings it out. I've got a lot of actions that I use for various, just for fun, but that's for another day. Okay, so that's my little picture pretty much finished. And I'm going to, let's just close all that up for the moment. We'll go right down, we'll go right down, highlight them all. I'm going to go Command G, Command G, flowers, flowers and birds. There we go. And they're all neatly tucked away. Click on the thing. Oh, there we go. So I had to click on the box itself. Make If I make large thumbnails, there you go. Now old people like me can read a whole lot better. Doesn't, I mean, it's, it's not helpful when you've got lots of layers like this working. Well, Tony wants to know why you want to use channels. Uh, that, you, you can talk to Tim about that. that that's for another one. <laughs> <laughs> one of the grey boxes in a week or two. Yeah. We'll do channels in a week or two. Yeah. So, uh, so there's my circle frame. The first, the first thing we started with, and now I just have to click that off, and I've got my nice little, um, and there's my wreath. So I don't need the structure of it anymore, so I can get rid of it, really. I can keep it there or I can just drag it away. It's not going to make any difference now. Uh, the, the other thing I'm just going to finish with, if I go to my library, just to pretty up the picture, the library, and I'm going to go into, drag it down again now. On off, on off, on off textures. And I think I'll put a texture on there just to make it nice. So I'm going to choose this brightly colored texture. Oh, I just dropped immediately into the right place. Couldn't drop it below the. That's right. I did. Um, there we go. Dropping that into the right place. Get out. Okay. Click to accept that. It's a bit strong, that colour. Oh, Tim likes it. I'm going to change it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to clip. I've brought up a hue and saturation layer. He's, I'm going to have to set him loose soon. It's getting worse and worse. Um, and I'm just going to drop that saturation a little bit because I don't want it to compete with my little... I want to do that. The saturation. Brings out the yellow and colors his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Just get red devil eyes, okay? And lift the lightness a little bit. Uh, Cecil wants to know where you get your textures from. Oh. Um, you can find textures online. If you Google textures, I like, I like free textures, or you can buy textures. I think you can buy textures from the Adobe Photoshop workspaces. Or take your own. 
or you can make your own. That's what a lot of people do. Um, technically, now, that's a good question because technically I couldn't compete this picture. I could compete it. Um, I could compete everything in the wreath. I took the photo myself, okay? So, therefore, I own that. This texture, I, I bought these textures somewhere off the internet some time ago. Um, so I can't compete this picture because I don't own every photographic element in the picture. So it, I mean, go out and take photos of Hessian bags or the grass or, you know, the textures at the back. So it was because I dropped it in, I accidentally dropped it into exactly the right spot. If I, if I just put my hand on the texture and I push it up a layer, okay, there, no, okay, let's go up a layer. So let's go. There. So now it's covered the picture. Okay. It's covered all my pictures. So it's there. So I need it to go into the background. So you can see the blue line when I drag it down and I'm just holding it. The blue line is where it's going to land. So then it lands in the background again. Okay. So the if you think of your um, Photoshop palette as a, I mean, you're building it up like a you know like a, a painting as well so the background is the base canvas and then everything you put on top in layers because we're working in layers everything you put on top on layers just adds up and up and up to the top as well so by dragging him down to the bottom i'm dragging him behind behind the other active elements there okay now jane uh, says it must have been fiddly to cut out the wattle but i think that's one where i held the black background for you. yeah yeah so so I was going to go into cutting out tonight, um, but I feel like it's, um, let's just, you know, let's just say, we'll just save him, save, save a copy, which is saving as a JPEG. Where did that go? Oh, it's spinning. Okay. Spinning. Wreath. Um, Wreath one. I'm going to save it in Photoshop. I'll save it as a JPEG so that will be smaller, okay, um, as a large file. And then that's saved. Now I can do with it whatever I like. Um, the other way, I mean, I started on a small, on a, I opened a new file and I started in a small file. You could see that I, when I bought the objects in, I had to close, I had to make them smaller every time I bought a new object in like that. Um, so to bring them down to make the small. So that's my file size, as you can see down the bottom here, 93 is, is reasonably small. But sometimes if I work on a larger canvas and I'm trying to get much more precise measurements or resolution out of the pictures, it makes a really large file. I can go up to three or four or five gig um, with those file sizes. And what I do is by the time I reach the end of putting the picture together, I actually open a new file that's a web size file and I, I merge the layers together and I put them onto a fresh page and then I finish the global adjustments there so that everything's sort of glued together after saving the Photoshop file. But cutting out is a, um, it takes hours and hours. I can cut it out really quickly here or if I want to do something very precisely, I can take... Um, put the photographing of it. You can see in this flannel flower picture that at Tim's, I've got my trusty helper in the background holding a black um, a black tablecloth. We put, took a tablecloth out onto DY headland and we just isolated these because the flannel flowers, you know, like a whole field of flowers, it's really, they're really messy flowers to photograph. So, um, and I didn't really want to pull up bunches and steal them and take them home like I might have done to a few of the pink flannel flower. I won't admit to that to anybody. Um, but the, the, so to isolate them, we, I got them to hold a tablecloth up behind and that allowed us just to um, photograph them with a nice smooth background as well. The reason I did that was it helps me to cut out afterwards because when you're using the cutting out tools, of course, it's looking for areas of contrast because I always use the refine edge tool as my favourite go-to choice. Um, and it makes it easier for that to see um, how to cut them out. Cutting out is, um, I was going to do it tonight, but I think we've taken up too much time anyway with that. But that's a whole other rabbit hole to go down. But, but it's nice to actually sit down, cut out some flowers, put them in a library, put them in a folder and have them so that when you feel like you want to do something to play with, just to play with something, then you've got all these items just ready to go, bring them out. 
some crepe myrtle drag and drop. He's already cut out nice and easy, you know, and then you put them into your pictures, add in whichever you like. Uh, there's a couple of jonquils. Thanks, Robin. That was really interesting. I've, I've often wondered how to get started. I mean, I've, I've understood combining layers and things, but seeing how you did it was really valuable. Thank you. Yeah. One, one of the tricks with the layers is being able to swap where it sits. And as soon as you bring one layer below the other, then obviously it's going to sit behind uh, that top one. So that can save you quite a bit when it comes to, you can see how with blending, some of the blending worked quite well with the cutouts. You didn't have to go and mask stuff. Uh, we can just drop stuff in behind. So there's just a question on, on putting the uh, pictures together. It's, it's best if when you've done the cutout is to have no background um, so that uh, in one of those um, uh, removal tools on Photoshop on the side, you can remove the background. Um, and that way you've just got the image on its own. And uh, if you're gonna copy them across some, um, in some circumstances, you have to save them as a PNG. So if you save it as a JPEG, it puts a white background on it. If you save it as a PNG, it leaves the, the, the background as a, a transparent uh, background. So the PNG is the trick to, uh, to get the transparent background. Oh, there you go. Right. Yeah. That's handy. Especially if you want to, say, drag an image out of Photoshop and put it into a Word document. If it's a PNG file, it'll have no background. But if you drag it across and it's a JPEG, then your image will be on a white background. Okay, and Jane's asking about how you put it into the library. Uh, yeah, putting it into the library was that process where you, um, uh, yeah. when you open the library, um, Rob yeah, might so just share a screen it. again. Yeah. But okay. uh, you open the library and you've got the little plus symbol at the bottom, and then you can save the save it uh, save a graphic. So Rob's just going to show you that. I wanted to put that in the library there. So if she wants to put that one in the library, you'll, uh, you've got to open which library you want to put it in. Open there, open there. You hit the little plus at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And then that actually is loaded as a graphic. Hit the graphic and then that will load it. Uh, the last mm -hmm. image yeah, uh, puts it in there as a, as a graphic. Very good. Robin, can I take you back to the very, very beginning of your presentation, which you started off with a white square. How do you get the white square to start with? Okay, Mike, um, so file, Photoshop file, new, okay, new document. Okay, so this is where Photoshop has um, some custom documents that they make, okay. So, so they provide you with some, this 1080 by 1080, is a square that's about web size. Um, it'll your picture will end up saved at about two megabyte. This is what you know you might use for putting into Camera Club. Um, so that that screen you've got up there at the moment is, is, is it on the, the if I screen? go to recent. If I was making one for Camera Club, which is 1920, yeah, 1920. I'll put that into the box on the right. 1920 by 1080. And I want it landscape orientation, so I pick on it. Really, only needs to be seventy-two pixels. Oh, we, we make it three hundred. You like it? Tim likes it three hundred. No, We're going back to three hundred. Okay. Right? And sixteen bit. <laughs> um, leave it at RGB. That's to do with your computer. Okay, and sixteen bit. That's to do with the quality of your computer as well. Leave these other ones alone, and then you create it. So that's just created a base for you there. And that, and that start format with. that you, oh, you can just there. drag your pictures in as you will, but it allows me, it means that then when I need to size it for something in particular or save it for something in particular, um, it, the, the dimensions are already set. I'm already working within those dimensions. And that okay. screen that you had, that you showed with the couple of options there, that's, the, that's a default within Photoshop. Yes, it is. It, it, it's always there. If you yep. this one here, yep. so that's under the what menu? It's under file and new. New. Okay. I guess I'm just used to importing a, a photograph in there, so I haven't started off with a blank one before. <laughs> just go up the top here. Oh, I see it's hidden. Select subject. When I press W on the keyboard, it comes up with select subject. 
So it should just select the flowers. You can see it's done that. And you can see that my mouse has now got a little crosshair plus in it. If I press the Alt button, it'll change to a minus. Do I want to add more of my picture or take more away? So I want to add more. So I'm just going to run the plus along the inside there. And that should outline all the flowers. Okay. Now I can either go into Select and Mask. And I'm going up to use the Refine Edge tool. And I'll just take out the remaining black bits there. This is, I'm doing this two seconds. This is a very fussy tool. It's very brilliant tool, but it's a very, very fussy tool and it, it's worth taking ages over it. Um, so that will cut out the rest there. If I come to the right-hand side, scroll down to output to a new layer and click okay. And there the layer's taken off. Mm. There's yeah. also, I could do it another way. I can go back to the black background and a W select the subject. Now, if it was a nice, easy subject um, that had nice, clean lines, which this one does not, I can just simply go back to Control J on my keyboard with that highlighted, and then it puts it into a mask on its own. And there's the Control J one as well. But as you can see, uh, the Refine Edge tool gives me much more of what I want. Yeah, can you do the brush version? So this must be a new um, feature in um, CC. No, no. I think we're going to we're going to stop there with cutting out. Uh, there's been a couple of requests tonight for cutting out as an as a separate session, and I think cutting out is worthy of a separate session rather than just tacking on the end of the night already. So mm -hmm. I think we won't go any further with that. It is quite a um, people that have done our workshops before know that you know you can spend two days on trying to work out how to do it. it can it can be immensely satisfying or extremely frustrating. Um, whichever way you do it. but it's lots of, once you get the hang of it it's quite addictive well so but I'll stop there with that and I'll stop screen the sharing. w and the different things you just did that must be in the new uh, uh, cc version mute me. Of the yeah. <clears throat> we need one big button that does all the speakers and the sound and everything swapping between the two people <laughs> Well, you have to get studio headphones and <laughs> all right. Anything else that's uh, that's that's grabbing at people's uh, questions at this time? Okay, so Jay Robin Aldridge is just saying I end up with too much information, so I think yes, we're told to keep the high side at no more than ten twenty. Yeah. Yep. So, so with the, um, I know that some people like, or well, Epson likes to tell you to do the 360 DPI because that's the resolution of the Epson printer, and maybe so, but um, I'll give you a challenge. You go and produce a 360 DPI and a 300 DPI, print the two of them and see if you can see any difference. <laughs> but uh, most competitions that you go in call up 300 DPI. Um, and I, that's just a standard, just like they go RGB, 1920 by 1080 and 300 DPI. Uh, that's that's just um, all the camera club settings of that. So that's why we just stick to the 300, even though 360 may be the native resolution of the Epson printer. So um, it really depends on what you're producing. Um, but uh, uh, so those settings are, are more for the computer. So because um, most of the digital stuff when you're displaying it, at Camera Club digitally, then you need just the 300 DPI. So, mm. okay. what do you reckon, TC? You're going to put a wreath around that fish next week? <laughs> it's not a kingfish, I know that. <laughs> Yeah. I can't think what they were called. They're definitely not kingfishers. No. We'll, we'll have to Google that for next yeah. week. We'll find out what the uh, the fish at uh, Lord Howell it's Island, the ones at Ned's Beach are. So, um, but they, uh, they're they pretty friendly. They're a bit of fun. So if you ever get a chance, quite the place to go to, to do your, your fish photographs. A yeah. uh, couple more messages. I think we've covered most of that. Yeah. Yeah. All right, but um, if Rob moved a little bit fast for you tonight, we'll, um, we'll put this recording again on uh, the YouTube channel. So mm -hmm. just
give us a day or so to it takes about a day for zoom to send us the recording and then a, a little bit of mucking around to clip and get rid of all the extraneous material to keep it as sharp and sweet as we can and then we'll post it on the uh, youtube channel and um we'll post it in what we'll do is that underneath the um the entry in the um uh the workshop page on the website we'll swap uh the text across to you know click the link to the youtube channel so that way you can find it and they're all there and uh, easy to get uh, get in contact with. Been fantastic, thank you. Thanks, Margo. You're welcome. It's actually not a bad time of year to do this one because of all the, the spring flowers we're about to get. So, mm -hmm. having got the inspiration, you're going to have all. So Sarah can go and individually cut out all those uh, those prunus blooms behind her and and use those on on the next creation that she'll be producing. Not after the bottle of wine I've just had. Well, one, one of the great things using a computer is that it can draw straight lines. <laughs> no matter how much you've drunk, the computer, the computer doesn't go wonky. So. <laughs> it makes you look good. <laughs> with another landscape next week. Um, maybe do another grand landscape so that you can uh, sort of get lost in... Uh, in that, okay. another nice uh, overseas location whilst we're waiting for lockdown to, uh, to end. Uh, that way you can have a little bit of a dream. So I quite like uh, Albert's one with his, uh, is that up in the Kimberley? I love that. That's fantastic. <laughs> what was that? The chipmunks. <laughs> you got a chipmunk filled run. <laughs> I don't, I'm not sure what your uh, what your 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 uh, bandwidth is doing to you there, Albert. But it may just sound like a chipmunk. <laughs> but that's one of those uh, those trees up in the Kimberley, I think, isn't it? Just nod. Yeah, 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 yeah. Love yeah. it. Yeah. <sighs> the little black cloth um, is a really handy little thing. So we've got a um, mm. it's just a bit of uh, felt, and it's uh, it's only about a meter by a meter, which uh, means it's nice and easily uh, managed. And uh, just pushing that up in behind the bottle brush or whatever, it gives you that nice neutral background. So when you're cutting things out, you've just got the black to deal with. So uh, mm. then you get a nice, nice, really sharp edge. Um, and uh, that way, when you're masking out, it's uh, it's nice and sharp. Another tip, uh, Tim, is to uh, wear something white yourself. Yes. Yep. So that you're bouncing cut light back bouncing into, the, uh, back into the flowers. Yeah, yep. Right. Because one here. one of the things you find, especially on on nice sunny days when you go and photograph and then mask, is everything's got a blue um, outline to it because it's reflecting the sky. Um, so that tends to make it quite difficult to mask the edge because you've got that blue aberration around the edge of the uh, edge of whatever you're cutting out. <laughs>